Hey, what's up guys? It's Kevin here, back with another video. Uh, today, I am gonna be talking about um, something really, really limited and something that I have been waiting for quite a while. Uh, I have been wearing um, this pair pretty much as soon as it landed. Um, and yeah, I'm very excited to talk to you guys about it. So today, I'm gonna be talking about the HAL Studios Velo Samba. So if you guys don't know, HAL Studios is an Australian based brand. They are a streetwear brand. They also have a store associated with it, highs and lows. Um, they are a really, really cool streetwear brand that's very like up and coming. They've had amazing collaborations with ASICs and their basics are just kind of like A1. They have my favorite socks. They have such cool pens as well as uh, like their t-shirts are really high quality as well as their color choices are very, very subtle and uh, like really, really low key. So again, today I'm gonna be talking about their first collaboration with Adidas uh, on the Velo Samba. And here it is, the HAL Studios Velo Samba. So if you guys don't know, uh, the Velo Samba is a modified Samba. So the upper is very, very close to the original Samba, except the bottoms have a thicker bottom as well as they have this exposed uh, like plastic plate that you're supposed to clip your bike pedals to. So it's a very, very unique uh, pair of shoes. I believe Adidas has a few like Velo Sambas available on their website, but this pair, it's one of 300. Uh, so they had a very, very limited drop only available on their website right around the end of November. Um, and it was gone like that. But I will say there was no queue. There is no waiting time. As soon as you were on there and you were logged in ahead of time, you were able to check out like immediately. So that was a very, very smooth and easy process for you to check out. I really do like how studios in terms of their uh, their ease of purchase because a lot of their ASICs collaborations were either um, pre-guaranteed for those who had uh, like previous orders with them, kind of like a loyalty sort of thing. Uh, they also have pretty decent, uh, I guess, website infrastructure where it doesn't really crash. But yeah, so talking about the house studios like Velo Samba. So funny enough, I do have a little bit of a funny story about these pair of shoes. So I actually have two pairs uh, of the shoes and I'll explain why I have two pairs. Um, my first pair came in at the end of November um, and my first pair was great, but as soon as it came out of the box, it had a few defects um, that were kind of alarming just because I actually did reach out to uh, John, who is the creative director and co-founder of HAL Studios. Uh, and he said that he's never seen like anything like it on any of the wear test models as well. Um, just a quick overview. Here's one of the tongues of mine. It comes with paint chipping and the other one um like one of the stripes of the three stripes is just uh, like, like completely gone i tried to re-glue it on and that's why you kind of see that uh like little glue stain and it just wouldn't stick on but given that happened i was i was kind of like oh man that sucks but i really do like the shoe itself um so i actually reached out um to john and he's so graciously uh, like gave me the last size nine. So I have this pair that is completely flawless that I'll be showing you guys for the review. Um, but uh, like rest assured, I have put a decent amount of wear and miles into this. Um, I haven't biked in them necessarily and I know that that's the main purpose, but I have worn these mainly for a casual perspective. Um, and I'm willing to give my thoughts as well as do like a comparison between these as well as a normal pair of Samba. So let's get into the details, enough of me talking. So like talking about the upper, the upper is composed of a natural dyed leather. And the reason I can kind of tell it's natural dyed is that there is some fading that can occur, some natural fading that occurs. And this upper is of a very, very dark, dark green. And I think it just looks amazing. The back stripe is also of a slightly lighter or warmer shade of green, but it's that same natural dyed uh, like leather 
all throughout the upper. Um, it might be a little bit easier to tell that it is a natural dyed leather with my worn pair. Here's my worn pair for reference. And you can kind of tell right there that there is some like uneven coloring, which I think adds to that wabi-sabi sort of vibe. So talking about the upper again, the three stripes of the shoe are almost this chain stitched on, as well as uh, they're of this pretty decent, kind of thick, uh, like tumbled leather. The toe area, the toe box, I guess, um, is again chain stitched as well as it's of this like really, really hairy suede. Very, very nice. The upper uh, eye stay portion is of that same thick tumbled leather that is on the three stripes. And the cool thing about the Velo Samba is that they do have this sort of bungee cord area as well as this additional lace hole. So it kind of gives it a little bit more of that utilitarian look. Um, and again, like one of the cool details is that they actually have an Adidas performance logo right on the tongue. The tongue is composed of a nylon tongue. Uh, the ankle area is actually really, really well padded with this nice leather throughout. So it's very, very well padded, well cushioned. And then the back area says Adidas by House Studios, design thinking VS ADHS MK1. So I'm assuming this means uh, like Velo Samba, Adidas, House Studios, MK, so Mark One. On the back, it says HSDT, which I'm assuming stands for House Studios Design Team or something of that sort, but it's of a really, really nice, hairy, very thick sort of suede as well. Um, the insole is very similar to the ASICS insoles where they have a sort of like leather, um, layer on top of just a normal polyurethane insole. This doesn't have a uh, super, super well cushioned insole, so it won't be the most comfortable, but it'll definitely be very sturdy. And like I mentioned before on that sole, this is a plastic plate used for stability for when you're riding your bike. You can see that it literally is that plastic plate that goes all the way down to the sole. So it doesn't have any sort of uh, like fiberboard or it's not fiber lasted or anything. It's lasted to this sort of plastic um, plate essentially. So for those wearing this for casual use, it definitely won't be as comfortable as your normal Samba or as any sort of um, like fiber lasted sole. But if you are okay or if you're used to very, very sturdy like lasted bottoms, like maybe some is uh, yeah, like an equivalent might be like like something lasted to a very, very dense cardboard or maybe uh, like something that's lasted to wood. It's very, very similar to that where it's very, very firm. Uh, so talking about the sole itself, it is a Adidas performance sole. It is different from that sort of like waffle traction that you kind of have with the Samba with the little grooves. But this one, they're all 3D sort of cubes that they kind of like oscillate back and forth. I'm not sure if you guys can tell, um, but they aren't just flat. They oscillate back and forth as well as there's some points right here, here, um, and here that are sort of flat that are supposed to give you a little bit more of that stable control while you are on the bike. And something I didn't mention is that the rope laces are indeed 3M and they do come with this lace toggle uh, as well. So it gives it that sort of utilitarian uh, like look as well. So on the left shoe, it says HSDT, House Studios Design Team. And on the right, it has that Adidas Performance logo. The other details of the shoes are very much the same. Uh, it does come with an additional spare pair of cream laces. And the cream laces are dipped in that classic sort of acrylic paint that they did on almost all of their other uh, like collaborations, including the ASICS pairs. But yeah, the shoe itself is very, very well made. I'm even debating on doing a sole swap on one of them to replace them with just a classic uh, like Samba sole or maybe even swapping it with maybe a Vibram sole or uh, like something of the same sort But yeah, very 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 nice looking shoe. I'm a big fan of it again I have been wearing my pair quite a lot um, 
but they do hold up to wear. They do, you see that sort of uneven sort of paneling right there. Uh, the quality is indeed quite nice, as you can kind of see, very, very nice compressions in the leather, very, very soft. And this is a shoe with purpose. So I think that's the fun part is that it has a purpose being a good like riding shoe and it accomplishes that with very cool details uh, scattered throughout. So one of my favorite pickups of this year and I'm so, so grateful for uh, John for honestly like hooking me up with another pair um, like after the slight mishaps that happened with this, I am so, so grateful. Um, and again, I have been putting a decent amount of wear into this. Again, just kind of wearing it more on that casual basis, but I am a huge, huge fan of them regardless. So something I didn't mention is that the box is a very classic Adidas performance box. Um, essentially, it's the box that comes with a lot of their performance models, uh, I believe, as well as some of their like sports oriented wear models. I believe the uh, Infinity 2.5s came in these as well. Uh, it's a very simple box and the style code is ID2887. And personally, if you guys are looking to pick this up, I know that the market is a bit uh, weird on these pairs of shoes just because they are one of 300. So it is really limited. So some sizes might be a lot more affordable than others. Uh, I would recommend going true to size or at least your normal Samba size. Uh, I did pick these guys up in a size nine, but the only reason that I picked them up in a size nine is because I knew that the stock levels of size nine would be higher than a size eight or an eight and a half. So I just bit the bullet. I sized up to a size nine. They do fit, but I do have a little bit of a thicker insole in them to make them more comfortable. So I do have this sort of like thicker Nike running insole that has a bigger arch as well as more cushioning. Uh, you guys could alternatively do that if you're kind of in between sizes because I'm definitely more towards an eight and a half, um, but a size nine in these work perfectly fine. There's no heel slippage just because there is a decent and ample amount of like cushion right here. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, like, let me know if you guys have any comments or questions about this pair of shoes. Um, I'd be happy to answer them in the description down below. I will also do an on foot and yeah, please do like, like, and subscribe if you guys like um, footwear, fashion, etc., and smaller brands like House Studios. Um, please do let me know and yeah, I will talk to you guys in the next video. I hope you guys have a happy holidays. Peace.